Hi, welcome to the Semantics Lecture Event about set abstraction. Now, set abstraction will be a very important tool for understanding the meanings of a lot of semantic expressions, uh, especially the ones that don't refer to particular objects. And we saw, talking about denotation, that a lot of expressions refer, or that is, they denote very particular objects. So the, the name Kansas refers to the state Kansas, and the DP, the sun, refers to the big ball of gas at the center of our solar system. But what about common nouns, like book? What does book refer to? Now, in, in you know, common speech or colloquial speech, we talk about the word book referring to things. But in a strict sense, and we want to use a strict sense in semantics, it doesn't refer to anything at all. Because when we use the word book, we're not picking out a particular object. If we want to pick out a particular object, we have to use a determiner. This book, that book, a book, these books. So in essence, it's the determiner that gives us the reference, and it's the book that's telling us something about the thing being referred to. So what does that mean? What kind of meaning is that then, if it's not referring to something? Well, this is where the notion of a, a set abstraction comes in. So set abstraction is a really useful way for understanding the membership of a set, especially when we're not exactly sure what the members of the set are. So let's use, I'll give you an example. So this is a map, this is Kansas, and these are the states that surround it, Oklahoma, Missouri, Nebraska, and Colorado. We can take these four states here that surround Kansas, and we can make a set out of them. Right, straightforward. And of course, because it is a set, we can order these any ways we like, as long as it's the same four states. Now we can give that set a name. We could call it the set containing Colorado, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Nebraska, or we can just give it a name, say, uh, C. We use a capital letter for it. So that's the set C. And we can form any set we want with any number of these states, uh, but in this case we've done that. Now when we say abstraction, what we can do then is find a property that picks out all of these states and no other states. And in that case, we uh, have an identity relation. That is, that we'll have a set that is identical to this one. So how do we do an abstraction? Well, we start by finding a variable. And then we can draw a line. A lot of, an, an older notation has people draw a colon. It's just as acceptable. Uh, we'll be drawing a line. So variable, line, and then a property of the variable. And that's how we write a set abstraction. And that's essentially how the abstraction works. We abstract over the set to get a property that picks out the members of this set. So in this case, we can use, let's say, x, as long as it's you know, a lowercase letter, the set of things x such that x uh, borders Kansas. So this is the set of x that borders Kansas. Now, we didn't specify that it's a state, but we'll just, for now, assume that we're only talking about states. When we look at the membership of this set, we get these states. So in essence, these two sets are identical. 
which means that we can replace one with the other any time. Now, okay, so what? what? What does that gain us? Well, so far it doesn't gain us a whole lot, because we know what these sets are. And we can replace either of these with the same name that we've been using. They're all the same. Remember, when two, uh, two expressions are identical, we can replace them. So, we have an abstracted set. Now, this will become useful when we don't know what all the members are. So we can have an abstracted set, and we don't even know if there are members. In fact, we might know there are none. So for instance, take the uh, set of individuals x, such that x um, is, a, you know, is a city with uh, over a million people. So X is a city with over a million people. Now, what is the membership of this set? It's going to be a large set, but it's going to include places like New York and London and Beijing and Singapore and so forth. It's going to be a huge set. We don't know all of them. But whatever that membership is, there is a set to it. Now, this will be important for understanding what the meaning of nouns and noun phrases are, is because that is what the noun is corresponding to. The meaning of the noun corresponds to an abstracted set that the, that the noun gives us. So we say, well, what's the meaning of book? Well, it's going to be the abstracted set of books. The set of individuals that are books. And again, say, well, what does that gain us? What does that tell us about the nature of book? Well, it doesn't. We don't have to really put, be able to put that into words. We, we can tell what a book is most of the time, and we can tell what isn't. And that's all we have to do, remember? We don't have to know exactly what goes into making something a book, but we know it when we see it. That's a book. That's a book. That's not a book. Well, when we say that's a book, what we're saying in a, in effect is that that object is in this set. So when we apply the word book to something, we can only do so truthfully if it's in this set. And whatever the members of that set are, it will apply. So in, in that case, that's what this word means. The noun means this. The noun phrase, city with a million people, means this. The noun phrase, state bordering Kansas, means this. It also means this, because we can, it's a small set. We can list all its members. So that, but that's how abstraction works. Straightforward concept. The abstracted set gives us uh, this property.